Okay, part four of uh, chapter four. All right, so this uh, begins on uh, page 76 under, uh, and we're still dealing with the section with uh, where, you, where you should be stopping. All right, so this, this part deals with uh, railroad crossings. Again, this is a stop line will be here, all right, but a motorist must stop at least 15 feet, all right, from a railroad crossing when there, is red, when there are flashing red lights, ringing bells, descending or, or lower gates, or fly, uh, flag signals. All right, also remember, uh, or picking up the uh, the signs for that, all right, and how important that is because uh, uh, not only 30% of all railroad crossings across the nation actually have the gates that come down when there's a train present, all right? So, uh, you know, again, we mentioned that a lot there in Chapter 2. On the following page, stopping for school buses now, right? So think 25 feet in and around a school bus, all right? A motorist must stop for a school bus with flashing red lights. State law requires a motorist... Uh, to stop at least 25 feet away if he or she is traveling on a two-lane road, all right, or a multi-lane highway where the lanes are only separated by lines, or on a privately maintained road. When traveling on a dual-lane highway, a motorist should slow down to two miles per or 10 miles an hour if, if on the other side of a safety island or a safety median. So that would be on like on, on parts of a uh, uh, like say Route 72, if there's a cement median or a land median between you and that and that bus, they're traveling one direction, you're going the opposite direction. They're not required to stop, but you are required to slow down. Now, if that's at an intersection, all right, there is no uh, nothing bar um, barring anybody from coming across the street. So now you are supposed to stop for it. All right. Second part in this section here. All right, when a school bus stops, all motorists traveling behind or approaching the bus must stop their vehicles at least 25 feet away, and a motorist should only proceed after the bus signals that have been turned off, and even when you, you, you're supposed to, be, it's your responsibility as a driver, right, to watch for your children or students or who, who might be, uh, have some type of disability, okay, or are still crossing the street, and there's a diagram for it right here. This continues on the following page, all right, and we mentioned this, all right, uh, earlier, okay, during Chapter 2 also. If a school bus is stopped directly in front of a school to pick up or let, or let off children or persons with developmental disabilities, a motorist may pass from either direction at a speed of no more than 10 miles per hour, all right? So on the campus of a school, all right, uh, with that bus directly out in front of the school, you're right. You're not uh, necessarily required to stop, but you are supposed to slow down to 10 miles an hour. All right. So in a school zone, it's a 25 mile per hour zone. But on the campus of a school, it's 10 miles an hour. Another portion that I hope is uh, common sense for you. All right. Pulling over for emergency vehicles. New Jersey law requires all motorists to yield to uh, emergency vehicles when emergency vehicles sound sirens and or flashing red or blue emergency lights. A motorist should steer, should steer to the extreme right of the roadway, stop and wait for the emergency vehicle to pass. Afterward, the motorist should keep at least 300 feet right behind a signal in an emergency vehicle, which is about the length of a football field, remember. All right. To finish this section off here, all right, a motorist should never park, park within 200 feet of a, of, a, of a fire department vehicle in service. That means that it's being used at a fire or drive over fire hose unless directed to do so uh, by um, fire emergency uh, rescue or police office officials. Next, move over law. All right, and there's actually a vehicle in Lacey that advertises this. All right, um, and uh, this is when someone is pulled over on the side of the road. All right, you are supposed by the police off by the police officers. You're supposed to make every attempt. All right, to try to uh, move um, over at least one lane to free the right lane so to ensure the safety of the people who are on the side of the road and the police officers. If it is found that you didn't do it, right, there's the violation for it. Motorists who violate this new this law face a fine of not less than $100, all right, and it could be as, as much as $500. Next, use of headlights, all right, so now we're moving all the way to uh, page 82 now. All right, here's just a message that's here, all right, from the state attorney general. All right, the use of headlights. All right, and again, uh, technology takes care of this for a lot of cars now because they have day daytime running lights. 
right? The proper use of headlights is critical to safe driving. Headlights must be used between one half hour after sunset and one half hour before sunrise, right? So dusk and dawn, right? Headlights must also be used when visibility is 500 feet or less, all right? And then also use a windshield wipers during rain, snow, or whenever encountering fog, mist, smoke, or other factors that reduce visibility, all right? So sometimes you'll see this advertised also on the side of the road. If your wipers are on, all right, that means your lights are supposed to be on too. Difference between uh, high beams or bright beams and low beams, all right, is in this following, uh, following section here, okay? Headlights have two sets of beams, bright and dim, which are controlled by a switch or a button, all right? And, and again, a lot of the newer cars, they do this for you also, all right? The bright beam is, op is for open country driving when there is no traffic in sight. And the bright beams helps the motorist to see further ahead and peripherally at wider angles. Okay, I did this uh, every time I take the, uh, I turn the lights on, okay, uh, in, in class after the lights are off when we're when highlighting. All right, this is this portion here. It can take at least three to five seconds for a motorist to recover from the glare of an approaching or high beam lights. All right, so what you're supposed to do is if someone has their high beams on approaching you, all right, take your eyes over to the extreme right, find the white line, all right, and keep your eyes there until uh, until that vehicle is um, is past you. And then dim beams down the bottom here. Dim beams are used for city driving and driving on uh, traffic on roadways. Dim beams are focused down on the road, and dim beams are used when when traveling behind other vehicles or when another vehicle is approaching. Remember, the uh, dim beams should be on or low beams should be on or during fog, which we'll also highlight All right, coming up. This section goes through the different ports, uh, portions of the lights. All right, so all we're going to highlight here in this section is this section here about the overhead lights found inside the vehicle. These types of lights should be used only when, only briefly right, uh, when driving to or to comply with the police officer request to illuminate, which light up. All right, the motorist compartment of the vehicle when stopped. All right, so you're not supposed to drive with this on, all right, only when you're asked to put it on. And here's a section on fog lights, right? Again, fog lights help other people see you. They don't necessarily cast off a, a tremendous amount of light, okay, but they, um, they allow other vehicles to see your car. All right, these auxiliary lights may be used with low beam headlights, to provide general lighting ahead of a, a motor vehicle, especially during foggy weather conditions. All right, parking regulations now, right? So again, this is uh, getting out of your vehicle, okay, and leaving it now, all right, and it's, it's parked, okay? So here's the portion where I had said it is illegal for a vehicle to be parked more than six inches from the curb. Again, six to 12 inches from the curb, Right. It was not like uh, there's police officers walking around, you know, with, um, you know, yardsticks or, or um, you know, rulers measuring these things. All right. It's just that when they see someone's blocking traffic, all right, uh, that, that alerts them to what's going on there. And then, uh, you know, they uh, they can write a ticket for being too far away from the curb. All right. But this portion goes into actual footages. All right. Uh, as far as exact footages, and you're going to need you're going to need to know. All right, as far as parking distance from, from certain things that are here. All right, so let's start here. And again, this is on page 84. Okay, and again, if you read through them, all right, all of them should be uh, pretty common sense for you. All right, but let's, let's pay special attention to these. All right, so do not park in front of a public or a private driveway, all right, despite my, what you might see in LBI, all right, especially in the summertime. All right, do not park within an intersection. Right, ten feet from a fire hydrant. Right, you have to be within uh, within twenty five feet of a crosswalk, which is the next one. All right, fifty feet from a railroad crossing and a stop sign. All right, is where is the distance you have to park from. All right, now dealing with the fire station, twenty feet if you're on the same side of a fire station, and if you're across the street from the fire station, it's seventy five feet. All right, so if you picture this, that's because uh, they need to be able to pull out the uh, the fire trucks in case of an emergency. Do not park or on a bridge or elevated roadway or in any tunnel, and then never park next to, all right, 
another vehicle, which is double parking. Remember, there's a difference between in front of and in behind, in behind a vehicle, or as opposed to next to.